What's going on YouTube? Bromaz here. Welcome back to more of Empire. What for what I'm doing? I hope you've enjoyed it so far. It's been alright. It's not a bad game actually. A little weird and strange different parts and a little difficult here and there. But other than that, it's alright. Alright, we're to Whitechapel. Oh, That's what I was looking for. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Such a pleasure to see you again. How dare you steal from the dead, Rakesh? Is that what your pawnbrokers is really about? These people are dead, sir. What they possessed could be useful for the living. And I'm sure they would agree if they could speak. Whatever your motives, you're making money by stealing from the dead. Dr. Swansea should be informed. No offense, sir. But Dr. Swansea is one of my customers. As I told you, I like to help people. And everybody needs help from time to time. How dare you steal from the dead, Rakesh? Is that what your pawnbrokers is really about? These people are dead, sir. What they possessed could be useful for the living. And I'm sure they would agree if they could speak. Whatever your motives, you're making money by stealing from the dead. Dr. Swansea should be informed. No offense, sir, but Dr. Swansea is one of my customers. As I told you, I like to help people, and everybody needs help from time to time. Since you're not afraid of dying, do you believe in life after death, Rakesh? No. I believe we must do all the good we can while alive, for our time is short and the obstacles are endless. Do you think you would enjoy immortality as a concept? I don't think so. Don't mistake me, I love life and I'd like to live a long life. But everything has to decay, sir, even goodwill. Oh, I can't miss Wazim anyway. Do you need medical attention? I'm feeling all right, Doctor. But perhaps it is because I, too, am used to the smell of the dead. Goodbye, Mr. Chidama. It's locked. Oh, serious, okay. I need to be careful going through here then. Oh, 18. Jeez.
So the recruitment of the new boys in Watch Apple, I think I found one. Oh, but he's as stupid as tall but tough. I asked him to prove me, to me he could have got some drugs to the public market and delivered quickly and nicely. They stopped me meat. I told him he's accepted as a wet boy. Wet boot boy, I should say. And he must now meet the bosses to get his, his orders. Oh shit! I'm dying. Fuck me. I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. I'll just find a way to go. Just kill me. Loading for? Why has it got? What's it got to load? I need to get there. I'm gonna watch up all. Oh shit, I'm going the wrong way. Well, wow. straight down there and there. Oh, I need to go for here, don't I? Yeah.
Oh, he didn't see me. Oh shit, he turned around on me. Two scouts I've, I've killed now, and these people haven't seen me. I have this thirst for blood. I can't believe I'm doing this. This is despicable. Oh, so, hop there. Straight forward, I guess. I need to find a way. To get past these people. I'm out of these people around here. Please open the door, sir. <sighs> Ah, uh, not for real. That makes it me. Oh, it's you don't become a human, though. I thought we've got to go in it. Oh, hi, boys. Oh, fuck me. What's that? I'm gonna get up. Come Oh shit, there's another one on my right. Fuck. I've got to run. I have to go fast now. Which has a way I could go along with rooftops or something. Yeah. 
Oh shit. Fucking stamina, man, it's doing nothing. Oh, come on, the stamina on this game is ridiculous, though. Still can't get over it, man. How that shit the stamina is. Back here. Oh, that scout's back again. Using the feed anyway. He's not moving my ass then, isn't it? Jeez. I can figure out a way back around there. No, I'll try and zoom in if I can. Oh. I'm here. Don't think there's a way down there, I don't think. Oh. I am not fighting him. I'm not fighting another werewolf. Um, mister, there's a werewolf down here. Well, I can't go that way then. Oh, dear. Oh, are you, mister werewolf? Yeah, come on, come on, follow me, follow me. Come on, follow me, follow me. I brought him out, brought him out. They're, they're focusing on him. What? We just took them out. Oh, 
fuck me, it's probably not a good idea to... Shit me sideways, leave me alone, leave me alone, go for, go for him, go for Wolf, go for Wolf, my house is doing still. Okay, okay. No, no, we won't leave me alone. Why are they both going for me? Give me a second, guys. Sorry about that. Oh, my door went off, so Megan was going crazy. Oh, the plan worked. Used the world to take care of them things. All the humans. He's all dead now. He was dead at least. I'll go through there. Yeah, it's a, that's the plan. I think. I think it works. <laughs> oh, what's up there? It's locked. So come on, I wanted to get up here. Why can't I get up before? Actually worked to get him out way. Uh, couple of that plan actually works. We all took out them things to look at the humans. Or the gangs or I don't know what. How many times do you want to say that? I need health. Whitechapel. This neighborhood is linked somehow to the kind Lady Ashbury's blackmail. First, let's find this Petrescu fellow. What happened there? I'm afraid of this guy. Me, I'll not die in some what? Shooting a boy in the middle of the street. Not the best thing to do, wouldn't you say? What? You saw what happened. Who are you? I'm Dr. Reed. And I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you promise me to set your gun aside. No. Look, I I'm not a violent man. I'm Benjamin Palmer, doctor. And no one can help me. Not even you. I have found a very interesting letter. Your son planned to prove his worth to the gang by stealing your medicine. Oh, I see. So the little bugger thought he could use his dad to build a reputation. The gang's recruiter was dead when I found him. Perhaps you should take better care of your son. I love my Albert, sir. Believe me. It's just... A... Well, I'm an arsehole, I suppose. This guy's pissed off his last. Anyway, thanks for the letter. This is for your trouble. I'm meeting this guy. I need to feed, so this guy's getting eaten. 
drain of blood, so to speak. Not just the main area, I'm just going to go to. Perfect. I need to fight for a while now. Good evening, Miss. Good evening, sir. Are you interested in a miraculous cure for this unknown and deadly epidemic? Actually, I am. Then you have come to the right place. The famous Swanborough Cordial is all you need to help keep you in perfect health. Oh, really? Why didn't I hear about it during my studies? I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Dr. Jonathan Reed. Ah, my brother has spoken of your research, sir. I'm Loretta Swanborough, and it's always a pleasure to meet a fellow healer. Tell me, who intrigues you most in Whitechapel? The region itself is something to see, but I would say Camellia the mute florist who gives away her flowers. Is there anyone I should avoid? Cadogan Bates, without a doubt. The bloody bastard remorselessly exploits poor migrants as soon as they get here. What do you think of the locals? Most of them are afraid or desperate. They all come to me eventually for my remedy. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like to talk about competition. Competition, you say? Never met her, but it seems she provides some sort of medical care to the poor. The whole thing has to be some sort of scam, if you ask me. Goodbye, Miss Swanda. Perhaps we'll talk again. The Swanborough Cordial can be the answer to all your problems. As long as you have the money. Do you want? Leave me alone. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I'm looking for Nurse Dorothy Crane. There is no Dorothy Crane here. Now, goodbye. I'm afraid this medical leaflet says the opposite, sir. Really? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to close this door right now. Go bother someone else, Mr. Doctor. To enter that house, I must discover who this man really is. Maybe I could start by observing what he's up to. Can't see anything from here. I get in. No. There's nobody here. I speak very well under to him. I cannot enter. Oh. 
strange man was at the door with the pass for our medical facility. I refused him entry. Darius, how could you know he didn't need our help? His clothes were too finely tailored to be for Whitechapel. Perhaps just a friend of that stray poet who is always about. Richard Nidacott? No, not of the same cloth, this man. I suspect some machination from that journalist. Clayton Darby? Is he still asking questions? What's she up to? Yes. I saw him drifting around St. Mary's Church. I swear he is tracking me just downwind. I must talk to that journalist or the poet. They must know about Darius. Nearby the church they just mentioned. Cheap price, good quality. Come on, take a look. Don't be afraid. You are blinded by your false faith. Imprisoned by your daily routine. Unable to see the true horror around you. Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. He has no relatives at all? No. Except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him. But it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. It's a disgrace. People are left to die alone. No one is properly informed of the risks. These are bad times indeed. So much for the glorious British Empire. What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. 
Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? That science is unable to explain the facts doesn't mean there is no rational explanation. I confess, I share your point of view, Doctor. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Whitaker is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming Armageddon. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, and I just have a few questions. A scientist? You are much more lost than I thought, my son. I lost. I can't mesmerize him, fuck's sake. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences. And most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know? Blinded by science as I am. Well, you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. Well, I suppose I can spare a few minutes listening to your so-called truth. As a doctor, you must be aware of a decimating epidemic. But let me tell you that this so-called Spanish flu is just the beginning of the end. What do you mean? The beast is finally revealing itself, corrupting the flesh and the heart of men. With my own eyes I have seen them, those minions from the abyss. Really? And what would be your answer to this biblical threat? We must fight the disease before this legion outnumbers us. But not with scalpels and microscopes. No. What is left then? Cleansing fire. Tell me, Tobias. What exactly is your plan concerning the cleansing of this city? God will recognize his own. More than once this city has risen from the ashes, hardened and purified by the flames. Purification by fire has proved useful, but where do you stop? Burn the clothes? The buildings? The corpses? Worse? Your lack of faith is predictable. But my task is to convince rational minds like yours to see the light. This is God's will. You're mad and dangerous. You're nothing but a soulless butcher. A small-time Torquemada. The Savonarola of Whitechapel. My son, if you think salvation is a free gift, go listen to the lies of that pompous fool, Joseph. Joseph, a fool. Vicar Larrabee of St. Mary's Church. While he continues preaching his fraudulent redemption, more and more people die in the streets. Have you any friends? Any family left in these terrible times? No. But I have a disciple I see as my son. He is so devoted. I sent him to preach the good word in the heart of this corrupted city. Where did you send him? I sent Samuel to the Stonebridge Cemetery where the pestilence and evil grows night after night. You sent him on some preaching crusade during the epidemic. As a true believer, Samuel will fear no evil while he walks through the valley of the shadow of death. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane? 
from the Pembroke Hospital. I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses, but I especially abhor that Nurse Crane you mentioned. Why do you hate Nurse Crane more than other nurses? Before coming to London, she was a member of the communist resistance in her country. That's what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. So, you're not exactly a fan of Florence Nightingale's work. But nurses are essential for modern healthcare. Nuns should be the only women allowed to take care of male patients. It's obvious only they have the necessary moral fiber. This guy's bonkers. <laughs> Don't you fear getting sick yourself? I've been touched by God's grace. I am perfectly healthy. I have heard enough for tonight. Goodbye. Find the mailbox. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I know what you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. It reeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm, truly. I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? You don't seem to need my medical attention for now. Very well. Goodbye then. Okay. She won't speak at all. It's locked, all right. Oh, that's a mailbox. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Give me a second, I'll get you on the toilet. Well, I'll find the mailbox in a little already. It 
path locked. He's still blabbering all over. She's generally trying to help people. I cannot enter. Well, that's a long, long way around, I think. I've got a map. Yeah, I need to get behind there. And the only way is actually through it. I must be in the way in there, right? It's locked, all right. I, mean, I can just climb, drop. He's a vampire, you know. I have some sort of. Jump up with ability or something. That's where I need to go. Shall I go for even? Lynch void! Watch out! Oh fuck! She has a battle Christ, quite literally. <laughs> Oh, about to kill him, man. Almost. I need to get there, but that's be a key. Oh, I need to kill that guy over there. Cost them, I think. Look lively! It's on to us. 
Oh fuck, I'm, I am quite literally fucked. I need my health to generate. Come on, halfway up before we run into something fucking more dangerous. Oh, it's gone. Leave me alone. I don't know how to hide out. First. Look at it! Vicious bugger! You're next, mate. God walks with me. No, you just have a cross that kills a vampire. Blood away from me. Oh shit. The power of the Lord commands you. Fuck that. Oh, okay. Ah. Oh. Take some stamina as well. He hit me hard then. A little safe house for me then. I'll back up. I have a gun at least, got all these bullets, but I don't have a gun. Oh, 
I need to make more, more serums. Oh, I do have a gun. Sweet. Health regenerate, please. Roll back to the house. Fuck. Okay. The power of the Lord commands you. Yeah, we're lucky don't do it long enough. Oh. Fuck me, this guy hits hard with that stick, doesn't he? Jeez. I took my bullets, that's one thing. Maybe not. I thought that would have killed him, but it does not. He's almost dead. I don't know what that got me. I think he's almost dead, that's one thing. This man stunned me with his face, his crucifix. This is not good news. Yeah, he almost got me a few times. Give me a second, guys.
I'll just figure out how to get in uh, that place. It's locked. How do I get in there? Don't be shy, handsome. What can Christina do for you? I'm not looking for what you're selling. But I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. I'm a doctor. Megan! Doctor Shh! Alright then, but be Give me a second, guys, sorry. Megan, come here, you. Meg. Hey! What's the door gone off? I, can't, I didn't hear it. Give me a second, guys. Sorry. Sorry about that. Megan was going crazy. Though I usually get paid when I open my mouth. <laughs> okay. Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time, until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room or a dark alley before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty? Or anything else you have never suffered from? That's a good point. Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London. And you could be exposed. Or expose others. I don't like doctors. Or hospitals. But I don't like you asking questions. Considering your line of work, I assure you it is only a matter of time before you have health issues. If it is going to happen, it will happen. Right now, I need money. That's what's important. <laughs> you can put your own life in danger. That's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger too. And you think that would worry me? <laughs> if you knew the men I deal with, their health would not be what you'd worry about. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Anything you can tell me about her would be helpful. I don't know her, but I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came from Romania, like me and many others. You seem to respect her. Dorothea helps the sick people of Whitechapel. Everyone should respect that. Tell me about yourself. Are you joking with me? People don't usually come to see me for conversation. I have no interest in your work. I am, however, curious as to what led you into this career. <laughs> Short story. The war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. I had few options left.
I always thought I was the master of my own fate. But now I know we don't always have control of our lives. I don't judge you. You know, this money is not only for me. I have good reasons to need this money quickly. But it is not your concern, Doctor. Do you know Nurse Dorothy oh, Gray from the Pembroke that. Hospital? Anything you can tell me about her would be helpful. I don't know her, but I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came from Romania like me and many others. You seem to respect her. Dorothea helps the sick people of Whitechapel. Everyone should respect that. I thought I got no hint of her. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. Am I getting first way? Ah. I'm going to find it. I'll make it quick, mate, don't worry. Oh, shit. Where did he come from? Kill one, I can that's a bit right. Oh shit, he's got me again. Isn't it? Oh fuck. Oh Okay. I wasn't expecting it to be any uh, vampires over here, to be fair. Oh, fuck me, I just fucking thought about a hit put engine as well. Oh, 
me. You do run out of stamina quite quick, don't you? Fucking hell. Fuck me, come on. I had to put one hit on him. Ah, are you for real? How do I do so little damage? It's all that. I die anyway. Jeez. <laughs> If you do guys don't lock onto him. Don't lock onto him. You lock on, try to try to fight one of them. The other two will jump on top of you and regen, just take one at a time. Because if I lock onto the other two and have to try and fight him, he'll jump on top of me. Best way to do it is just do this. Because for some reason they're giving this character a stamina bar, which I don't understand. They they have. So you just evade and attack when you can. One dead. My, my hit, what I'm seeing in the game, you don't want to uh, lock on. Not that you, not that you get one, and you're against multiple of these, don't lock on. I don't want to, I want to kill with a trial, but do look. Come on, that him. Kill that one. Right now, I can lock on. Actually, focus on killing this one. Perfect. Oh, okay. This weapon is definitely better than what I was using. <sighs> I got through it, guys. Eventually. You wouldn't believe how many times it actually took me to do that. Alright. I just wanted to get under the story, but I. <laughs> Right, don't freeze my game again, please. I'm just going to take a break and a bit because my pad's dying, so I'll be swatching the film for a couple of hours or something. Just a little bit now. Morbidity can breathe its own beauty and grace. White chap. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please be my guest. 
Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. Let's <sighs> drink. Well, I'll stop doing something first. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you if I can. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane. A nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But, sorry, no, never heard of her. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. Hmm. May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy. But the scourge has not been all bad for the city. Oh, no, sir. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Noisy, cacophonic, quiet, nowhere to be found. And now, listen to this oddly peaceful silence. <laughs> all right. Yes. The enjoyable silence of the grave. You have a unique perspective on the situation, I must admit. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them. But how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. If some misfortune came upon you, who would be here to help you? Well, you for a start, my dear doctor. I understand your need for solitude, but it's not safe around here. I don't care. I don't have many friends, doctor, and my family despises me. Fair enough. <laughs> Straight point. Tell me, Mr. Nethercourt. Why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. In what way, exactly? The struggle by gaslight, the barren smiles and the added hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox, the stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid. Of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about. And that's what Whitechapel is made of. Do you not think it a little morbid? On the contrary, sir. Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. 
Just like my dear muse, the wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me about Camellia? Not much. And that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness. And have you ever tried to learn more about her? Where she lives? How she survives? Whom she may know? Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your news. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But, ah, will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel if she moves uptown? <laughs> Did you know the Mute Florist is a member of a secret society? No, I didn't. But I thank you for this information, sir. For it only enriches the mystery surrounding the precious Camellia. Are you not curious? Is there not more you wish to know? That girl has not an ounce of malice in her. Whatever she may be hiding, it's certain to be for the benefit of most, if not all. I fear you are a hopeless romantic, Mr. Nethercourt. Guilty as charged, <laughs> to read. May I ask you a few questions about oh, the district? Okay. Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be more. glad to help you, no. if I can. I'll leave you alone, sir. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Good evening, Mr. Nithercott. And good evening to you too, my good sir. Can I be of any help? Do you need medical attention, sir? It may be wise to let you prescribe me something. I don't feel like I should. I will see you later. I'll leave you alone, sir. Oh, now the gate's open. <laughs> One of us should feed him, actually. I wonder if I even can. Oh, where did he even go? Oh, there. <laughs> We're done. Good evening, Mr. Nithercourt. Oh, I don't, know, I don't, I don't think I can you too, my mark control him anyway. Can I be of any help? Nah. Can't. I'll leave you alone, sir. Oh, finally, it's been unlocked. Hello again, miss. Camellia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Mm, a stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have. Tell me about Richard Nithercott. I understand he is quite fond of you, Camellia. Nah. You don't seem to need my medical attention for now. Can't eat you either. <laughs> Very well. Goodbye then. Wait a second, guys.
Right, let's go back down there and find a way into that guy's place. This week, Joe. Come on, we can sort it out, right? It's not my call, Barrett. You pay one way or another. Please, Joe. How long have we known each other? We even used to be neighbours, for Christ's sake. I prefer not to give you another beating, Barrett. Excuse me, sir. I have a few questions for you. Another journalist? I didn't answer the first one, so piss off. I'm okay. not a journalist. I'm a what doctor. A doctor, you say? It's quite a rare breed in this part of town. Really? But still, here I am. Dr. Jonathan Reed, at your service. I'm Joe Peterson to some, but Colossus Joe to most. And I don't remember asking for your service, sir. Oh, I can't eat him. Have you heard of a nurse named Dorothy Crane? She's a colleague of mine and is supposed to live around here. Dorothy Crane? Yeah, I know her. One of the few good souls who dare to help the sick around here. Could you please tell me more about her? She's a nice girl. Tries to help the migrants. I offered to give her a hand, but she said my reputation would attract too much attention. May I ask what you do around here? I'll do whatever I want, and sometimes even more. Now sod off. I'll do this guy. According to you, physicians are scarce in this part of town. Why is that? Not familiar with this neighborhood, are you? I guess your fancy colleagues are too afraid of being stabbed in the back. This part of town does have quite a reputation. Would you say it's justified? Totally. Look at me, for instance. I always look my opponent in the eye before knocking him out. <laughs> man, this is a white hot man. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. Come on, take a look. Don't be afraid. Cheap price. Good. Welcome, sir. Please take a browse of my wares. I am Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Doctor? Interesting. I'm Barrett Lewis. Usually I don't have time to waste with talk, but at this hour of the night I can hardly refuse. Have you heard of a nurse called Dorothy Crane? Nurse Crane? So the bitch really is a nurse then? Always thought she was just some crafty foreigner, that one. Yes, she's a nurse, and quite a good one. What did she do to gain such notoriety? Dorothy Crane ain't even a real name. Something like Dorothea Craniu, something like that. Came to England fleeing the war, I was told. That doesn't explain why she irritates you so much. Your precious nurse crane gives away medical supplies and prescriptions for free. I offered to sell it for a fair cut, but no. Miss Crane wanted to play the quiet saint. As a merchant, you see Whitechapel every day. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary recently? Well, you mean besides the epidemic, the war, and all the usual crap? As long as I can remember, this part of town has been a bottomless pit, and no sign of the bottom yet. Violence is increasing in the borough. Yeah. A few nights ago, some blokes jumped me, came out of one of the condemned workshops. Fever. Madness, something like that. Where did this happen? Why did you go there? In the closed workshops nearby. I worked there as an apprentice in better days. Now I only go to find trinkets or tools. Too bad I was mugged, though. There was good money in that little box of loot I lost. Have you been hurt? No, but that's only because I ran like hell. Those men were raving lunatics, I tell you. Not even able to speak anymore, just screaming. How is business around here? Business? I have no business. Between this racket, theft, and customers getting scared, I'm losing money every day. I see. 
Sounds like you blame someone in particular for your situation. It's no secret Joe Peterson spends his time harassing merchants. But with me, he's trying to put me out of business once and for all. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. Oh, did he have a new hint of that? Are buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? Right, Try it. show me what you have. I got much. I'm gonna feel like I can sell with my hatchet. <laughs> oh, I don't know, I can sell more. Oh, I can. Oh, this is junk. Might need some life, so I don't know. You again? What do you want this time? How did you become the local bully everyone is afraid of, Joe? There's no pride in roughing up poor bastards. But this is the only job I've found. And it pays well, too. A job? So you're racketeering for someone else? I got enlisted by the wet boot boys, a gang from the docks. I'm their muscle for their dirty work. Most people don't become thugs when unemployed. This is a choice you made. I don't care what you think, sir. I'll do what I have to do for my own reasons, and that's that. I'm not sure Mr. Lewis would agree with your by all means necessary philosophy, sir. Oh, do you really think he's the poor victim here? Barrett can be as sneaky as anyone. Long ago, I even called the bastard my best friend. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? Joe Peterson. He's the villain here, isn't he? But you seem to know each other. I've known Joe for years. I saw him box once or twice. He was a friend then. But these days, he's just another thug. And no one has ever stood up to this thug. Nobody would be fool enough to stand against a wet boot boy. What can you tell me about Mr. Peterson? Besides his behavior toward you, obviously. Colossus Joe was a decent boxer. Good one, even. But after his wife passed away, he found every excuse to stop training. Just wanted to pick fights with everyone. It's never easy to find a new path in life, especially after the loss of a loved one. But crime is certainly not the best option. We've all had some rough times, ain't we? But most of us don't use our fists to see us through. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. The piss. <laughs> Mr. Petrescu, just one minute, please. You again. Go away.
Sir, wait. Stop this nonsense. I know Nurse Crane is here. Shall we speak man to man, you and I? <laughs> All right. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Totter. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see Dorothea. Don't make me regret this, though. Locked, all right. Just casually rubbing him. My shoes are there. Patient Razvan Vasily, high fever running on three days. Complaints of dizziness, muscle aches, and head pain, diagnosed with influenza. Treatment? Aspirin and salicin for the fever and discomfort. Liquids for dehydration, but he's having trouble keeping even water down. Thank you, nurse. Anything else I should know? He did lose consciousness this morning, but he's never had convulsions like these. <coughs> he's not convulsing, he's choking. He's not getting any air. Skull! Hand me that skull! What can I do, Doctor? Cut his throat to let some air in. It's too dangerous to operate with these convulsions. Sedative, nurse. Do we have any anaesthetics? I'm sorry, Doctor. None at all. I need to cut an air roll. I need to perform a tracheostomy. Short pipe. That rubber tube will do. We're going to cut a passage for air through the neck. Yes, mm -hmm. Doctor. He's breathing again, but he's coughing up blood. Internal hemorrhaging. I need to make another incision into the chest cavity to drain the fluids from the lung. Prepare another tube. A thoracostomy. Doctor, we've nothing to fight the infection. We need an aseptic environment. Right then, Nurse Crane. What do you suggest we do? I've no idea. I'm not the doctor. Time is of the essence. We need to perform a thoracic drain. Yes, doctor. He's still bleeding, doctor. I'm losing his pulse. The drain must have punctured the intercostal artery. There's too much blood. Are you all right, doctor? I... I can't see. He blinded by blood. I must... first suture the artery. Find the wound. The source of the blood. Needle and thread, Doctor. Good. The stitches are holding. How's he doing? We're losing him. We've lost his pulse. He's dying, Doctor! Cardiac massage. Now. Cardiac... What? Are you making this up as you go along? I don't know. I don't know. He's gonna go. He's gonna die either way.
We've lost the pulse. He, he's gone, Doctor. Nurse, we did everything we could. Truly? Everything you could. Is that how you'll report this in your log? Is this how the war went, piling up one poor corpse beside the next? This was not an influenza-induced seizure. I've never seen symptoms like these on the continent. Neither have I. But the previous symptoms leading up to this attack were the same, indistinguishable from the epidemic. No. There was something more vile in these reactions. Something... primitive. There have been numerous reports of mental breakdowns caused by the fever that accompanies the flu itself, Doctor. Yes, but... I'd best take some samples of the blood for analysis. I don't even know what to press on, so I don't know if I could save them or not. I haven't got a clue. I doubt you're here to test my bedside manners. I suspect it was more than intuition alone that led you to us. So, how might I be of service, Dr. Reed? The risks you've taken for your friends in Whitechapel are criminal, and you can pay dearly for them. Doctor, you think your warnings scare me? I've stolen and plied, blackmailed and lied, but what else am I to do? I'm all these people have. But why Lady Ashbury? Why her, of all people? She's pristine and proper, all right. But that she-wolf in sheep's clothing murders the poor for sport. I have her where she belongs, and I'll milk her for all she's got. Dr. Swansea is a sensible and honest man. He wouldn't have refused your friend's care at Pembroke. It's easy for you to say, Doctor. These people can't go <coughs> to the police, nor to the hospital. They don't even speak English. They depend on me for everything. So, the end justifies the means. Is that your defense? I know you're kind, Doctor. Just another fine-heeled, silver-spooned gentleman who was given the world on a platter. You know nothing of poverty. Nothing of the shame, the hunger, the loneliness. You've convinced me of the sincerity of your actions and their noble justifications. But all the same, blackmail is a crime, and it will stop Nurse Crane. So, are you going to turn me over to the authorities? Oh, I can kill her right now. Oh, so she's a charmer, and she forgets about it all. Or I embrace her and kill her, basically. Or I spare her, she resigns anyway. Charm. Listen very carefully, Dorothy. You will erase from your memory everything you pretend to know about Lady Ashbury and Pembroke Hospital. Let that rich bitch off the hook over my dead Nurse body. Nurse Crane, enough. Listen, as if your life depended on every word. I know you have a generous heart who gives freely to those in need, but you shall walk away from the shadier streets of your business. I will never abandon- Dorothy, the discussion has come to a close. Your clandestine activities in the Resistance are over. Let it go. I'll... I'll let it go. Yes. All gone. I can't even kill you. I got a trophy for that. Oh, I'm not able to mesmerize people. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, the first weapon is much better. I'd certainly prefer bludgeon. It's much, much better. That's a loot place. She's retiring anyway, so she's forgetting all about it. Might as well loot everything. Yeah, sure, I could have killed her, but the lady didn't want me to kill her anyway, so. I desperate earlier, she said that something about controlling himself, basically. Yeah, sure, I could have killed that screen. What's she doing now, though? It's locked, all right. It's locked, all right. Let's go out to Lady Aspirin and then call it. My control's dying now, anyway, so. So it's last bar. Hi boys. It's one of them! Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, no blood is definitely the best one to go to, I think. I could do with upgrading it though. I'm making it better. So I'd say uh Dr. Don pretty good at um, controlling himself. The Swanborough cordial can be the Oh, I need to i I'm going no I need to go back to the hospital, so it's just as long as you have the money. When science fails you, this leaves you. Don't I go the right way or not? Uh, follow this way. Yeah, I'm going that way. I know I am now. I think I'm going that way anyway. Yeah, I know I am. Human blood. Whoever left these marks did so deliberately. What's going on down there? Well, I found a new hideout.
Oh, okay. I'm trying to get out of there, but I won't stop. Fuck me, I just put my health up, man. I was running out. Uh, oh, okay, I can't climb up here. I don't know what I can do around here. I'm just going to go like that. Oh, man, I was supposed to feed on him. It's a fire arrow's not getting me. Guys, I think I'm actually going to take a break for a bit actually and I'll get back to it in a bit. My pad's dying anyway, so I've done the main part of the story, it's going to be put, we pull back to Lady Ashbury. But I'll get back into this in the next bit, and soon. Shouldn't take me not too long to complete the game, to be fair, anyway. I'm getting used to it now. I'm getting the feel for it. I definitely prefer the bludgeon of all the things I've, my weapons like. But yeah, it's not a bad game. It's alright, it's decent. Hello guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please let's go. Oh, okay, we're getting distracted because my phone's going off. I was saying, yeah, please like, subscribe below, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Peace out guys, take care.